In this video I'm going to be making an acrylic piece that will fit into an LED light base. I'm going to hook my LED light base up to our home automation so I can just push a button on my phone. It'll turn this light on and everyone will know that I am now recording. So I've already created my design here and if you need to know how to curve your text in Silhouette Studio like in this now recording, I'll put that at the end of this video for you. The important thing to think about first is that you want your design size to be what you want it to be um, at the end because if we create our tab and then we get to resizing everything your tab size is going to be affected by that also and then it won't fit into the slot of your LED base so I do want mine at about five and a quarter inches so once you have your final size of your design you can go ahead and create a rectangle um, I went over here to the shape selector and chose the rectangle option. And according to the manufacturer of my light base, which I'll put in the description so you can find one too, um, their slot width is 3.15 inches. So I'll go up here and change that to 3.15. And when I stuck my ruler into the slot, it had a depth of about half an inch. So this is going to become our tab that fits in the slot on our LED base. So what you want to do next is make sure that your design and your circle are all grouped together. Mine are, but if yours aren't yet, then you can select it all, right click and hit group. So now we need to move our circle so that it interacts with the rectangle that we created. So the things you need to think about here are the overall height of your project because if I move my circle um, further down into the base, obviously once I join these together, the height is being affected by how low into this rectangle I drag my design. But I also want it to have good interaction. So if I was to join it right here, there's not much points of interaction between the two. And I think it may be uh, brittle to stand it up with only that much of contact being made. So I'm going to put it at about halfway. And now I want to just make sure that my rectangle is centered to my circle. So I select my rectangle and my circle. Go up here to this icon and select this option here. And you saw it move it over a little bit. So now I know my rectangle is centered to my circle. Now, if you try to weld your shapes together first, I'll show you what happens. It's going to turn everything black. Um, so if you find out that that's happened, you can hit Control C to go back. And that's happening because your design, which is black, is grouped with your circle. So we want to now ungroup that. And so now when you select your circle, you're only selecting it and not your design. And now go ahead and select your rectangle also. So now when we say weld, it will work like we want it to work. But I am going to finally group all of this back together so I can move everything around the page freely. This will be our tab that fits in our slot, and since all of my design is in black, it will serve as one function, which will be engraving, and the circle and tab are in red, which will cut. Now, the other thing to think about when you're working with a clear acrylic like this will be, is that if you mirror your design, it will be engraving on what will become the back so that the front of your acrylic has that nice smooth finish. So in order to mirror this, I'm going to right click and say flip horizontally. So now I'll save that as an SVG. So now that it's saved, let's head over to the Glowforge user interface and get this design cut and engraved. Here in my Glowforge design library, I'll hit the upload button and find my design file and open it. So here is my design 
um, on the medium clear acrylic proof grade material that I have and it has set it to the proof grade settings but I do want to change my focus height on this so that it defocuses the laser as I've talked about in my other videos and once I've done that I'll leave the rest of the settings the same and hit the print button I'll go record this on the Glowforge so we can see the magic happen. While this camera is getting set up, I'll also say that I use the Affinity Inline fan now, and I'll link to that in the description. So if you listen here to how quiet the machine is running and go back to the desktop organizer video at about 8 minutes in, you can really tell the difference that the Inline fan makes. And now I'll speed the video up so we can get through this faster. And we're back to real time here for the final cut. Our print is done, and that took 19 minutes and 35 seconds to engrave. I've got everything weeded and stick it into the base, and it fits great. It does wiggle a little bit because I think most people are using the thicker quarter inch, but this is the medium proof grade, which is about an eighth of an inch. But it does stay upright fine once I push it back. I'm not going to worry about doing anything extra. So the remote has a lot of different options on it. You can select particular colors. You can turn the brightness up and down, turn it on and off. And it has different display settings like flash, strobe, fade, and smooth on there. Another important detail about this is that the connection is either for use with batteries or you can use a USB, but it does not have a standard outlet plug on it. So I needed to get some additional adapters um, when I ordered mine, so you may want to think about doing that as well. And next I'll show you how this works with my Google Home. It's a pretty cool feature that I set up. I'm having probably too much fun with it. Okay, Google. Quiet on the set, please. I had a lot of fun making this project. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. And if you know of a better way to do this or something else to try the next time I make one, please also let me know that. Hit the subscribe button so you can catch my next videos. And if you stuck around this long to learn how to curve your fonts, then let's do that now. In Silhouette Studio, you can click on the A to start typing your text. and then you can select whatever shape that you want. Um, any of these will work, but we'll use a circle. And I'm gonna fill in my text with a color just so we can see it easier while we work. So now if you double click on your text, you can see this arrow 
um, section here. And if you drag that onto your shape, it will take the shape that you've created. You can drag it all around however you want it. Um, you can use this uh, here, also this slider, to take it out further away from your shape or to bring it in closer. And you can also put it on the inside of your shape like that. You can also change the size of your shape itself, which will also affect the curvature of your text. And once you decide how you want your text to look, um, you can ungroup it from the shape and then move it around wherever you need it to. But before you do that, you want to make sure that you've selected the final uh, font type that you want because you won't be able to edit your font uh, once you ungroup it from your shape. So once you've decided that, go ahead, right click and say ungroup. And before you click off of anything else, say group again, and that will keep all of your words together while also separating it from your shape. And from here, you can then change it however you want again, but it also keeps that curved configuration.